Money Pounds with another episode of Christians Engaged. We are going around the state of Texas looking for public servants who that have faith in God and can explain to us what they do. Um, last week, we were with Justice of the Peace, Wayne Mack, down in Conroe. And this week, I get to have one of my dear friends uh, that I am so excited. We've been trying to get him on the podcast forever, uh, Judge uh, George Flint up in Collin County. Uh, George was elected to the uh, 401st District Court in Collin County um, just a little while ago. He, before that, he served as the Justice uh, Associate Justice in the Collin County Probate Court. He has 39 years of legal experience in Texas courts, has been an attorney, was also the past chairman of the Collin County Republican Party, a member of the North Texas Crime Commission, and has served on so many nonprofit boards. I mean, again, these guys that we're interviewing have so much community experience. So I'm excited to talk to George about the court systems and why it matters for Texans. George, thank you for joining us. Well, Bunny, thank you so much for having me. Um, and um, fire away. Let's get started. <laughs> Well, I love that you've always appreciated with what we do with Christians Engaged because we're trying to talk to people about prayer, voting, and engagement, and being people of faith. Why should people of faith, George, care about the role of the courts? Uh, what is the role of the courts in our society, and how that does that impact their lives? Wow. Um, well, you know, <laughs> I think ever since uh, the beginning of the Old Testament, we've had uh, we've had judges, um, oh, oh, and, and it's important to God, it's important to, to the maintenance of society, that we have people of integrity who are, um, who, who are put in places to help our citizens decide what's going to happen next. And sometimes that's civil. Uh, and, and sometimes it's resolving family disputes. Sometimes it's criminal um, and trying to decide uh, what, what appropriate punishment might be in certain circumstances, uh, whether somebody is guilty or not in other circumstances. Um, and as a general jurisdiction court, I do all three of those, uh, general civil, family, and criminal uh, law felony cases. So explain to that, go into a little more detail on that for people. They're, they might live in, you know, Montgomery County or Harris right. County or whatever, and they've right. got all these judges on their ballot. And they don't understand, you know, what do all these judges do? So explain that. You have criminal courts, family courts. What are all the courts that you have in an area? Well, well let, let's, let's start back historically and then bring it up to date. Perfect. Uh, historically, there are basically five levels of courts in Texas. The first and most basic level are justices of the peace. And you mentioned you had talked to a justice of the peace last week. They handle small cases um, uh, up to $10,000 uh, in value for contracts and they handle evictions. Uh, they also handle a number of very small criminal cases. Then the next level, if you have it, are what are called county courts at law. Um, and the county courts decide misdemeanor cases and larger civil cases, but do not handle family cases at all. Then you had the state district judges of which I'm one, and the state district judges are in districts. Um, my district is the 401st. My district happens to coincide with Collin County. And most of the uh, district judges in the large cities, Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, El Paso, places like that will be, um, their districts will be the same size as the county. However, in rural parts of Texas, the district judges are circuit judges, and they'll actually go from county to county. Um, and I think the, the largest county district is 20 some counties 
that a wow. single district judge handles. And it's glad district, you don't have that job. <laughs> no, I'm very glad I don't have that job. Uh, and then as district judges, like I said, uh, they handle the felony cases, uh, uh, family law divorce cases, cases involving children, and um, uh, general large civil cases. So uh, they handle a lot. And those are called general jurisdiction courts. And that's what we used to have. And then levels three, four and five are appellate judges. Um, and those are what you normally think of when you think of justices. And we have um, uh, the Court of Appeals, which we have one in Dallas. Um, and then we have the Supreme Court for criminal cases. The Supreme Court is what is called the Court of Criminal Appeals but uh, they're, they're sort of side by side. And so those are the five levels. Three trial courts, if you have it, justice of the peace, county court, district courts, and then two appellate courts where people would appeal decisions um, that are made. And all those are on the ballot uh, <laughs> at, at various points in time. And again, going back, the reason a concern uh, involved citizenry, and particularly uh, a Christian citizenry, needs to care about that, is you want judges who will follow the law, who will um, try to adjudicate fairly, and quite frankly, try to use uh, their gifts of discernment um, to be both the shield of, we're, we're shield and sword. Um, and we, we exercise the sword, if you have it, of, of uh, judgment and, and of conviction in the case of, of criminals. Um, we, and, and in civil and family cases, we do make decisions. But we're also the shield in that our job as judges is to protect the citizens uh, from perhaps an overreaching government, uh, from the executive. We have our entire base, our entire constitutional concept is three co-equal branches of government, the executive, the legislative, and the judiciary. And the judiciary stands as sword and shield uh, for the protection of society. That's a fabulous way of putting that. And I, and I love how you break that down because a lot of times we're just thinking about the Supreme Court, like the U.S. Supreme Court. Yes. But when we look from state to state, guys, and, and here in Texas, and if you're in another state, you have the same process going on. We have our state legislature in Austin, right? We yes. have our executive branch, which is the governor, and then we have our courts in the state that are, are doing those same check and checks and balances that we have nationally. It, yes. That's a really good point, George. Yes, and, and the federal system uh, parallels the state system in many respects, um, but it really begins locally, <laughs> which quite frankly is why the justices of the peace are, are really almost the citizen courts. Um, and the justices of the peace, for example, don't have to be lawyers because at the end of the day, common sense is to be prized. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and as we get, if you have it, deeper and deeper or higher and higher, depending, uh, it, it becomes important that we know the law because we're supposed to follow the law. But at the end of the day, common sense is, is helpful as well. So what do people need to know? You know, again, we're a nonpartisan Christian ministry here, as you know, Judge. Yes. Um, but what do people need to know to navigate this ballot? Because we elect judges in Texas. You know, maybe you can comment on that. Um, you know, some states elect their judges. Some are appointed. We elect them here in Texas. What do we need to know about? You know, we're putting people on a ballot on a party platform, right? So they're yeah. signing on as a Democrat judge or Republican judge. Why is that? And then also, you know, what is a constitutional conservative judge? When people talk about, I'm a constitutional conservative judge, what in the world does that mean to the common folks? So break some of that down for us, if you well, don't mind. Thank you. You know, I've always been bothered by catchphrases. And it's very easy to say that I'm a constitutional conservative 
but what does that mean in practice? What it means in practice is that in difficult situations, I follow the law rather than my own private sense of what is right and wrong. And people might say, well, George, that, that, that's somehow unfair. We elect you to use your good judgment. And the problem with that is that if I use my judgment independently of the law, I have become my own little petty dictator. Um, and we are a government of laws. We are subject to the law. The highest law in the country is the Constitution, both of Texas as a state and the U.S. Constitution as uh, the federal government, as the United States. That is the highest law. But so then is the law of the legislature. And so is the common law, the law that has been developed over the years by other judges. Um, in fact, you could say reaching way back because we are a Judeo-Christian based uh, system that reaches all the way back to the Old Testament. Um, for me to ignore that, it, it based on my own sense of right and wrong in this in the situation, it is to destabilize society because then every judge becomes their own dictator. And so when we talk about a constitutional conservative, and what I mean by that is simply someone who first and foremost places the law as, as, the, as the object to be followed. Um, and that begins with God's law it falls. It, it, it then is the law contained in the in the Constitution and and in the legislative in, enactments and in the rules um, and quite frankly in the common law in other cases that have been decided by other judges and hammered out over a very long period of time. And and I think, Bunny, I can I can put this in an example uh, that. Uh, I handled a contract case. This was about 15 years ago where I had a, a judge in Dallas County tell me that he did not believe my law because it, uh, because it had not been decided in the last 10 years. Well, there are elements of contract law that go back 150 years that are part of the stable system so that you know when you make a contract with somebody, you can rely on that as if you have it private law. And to say that the only law that is good law is the law that's been decided yesterday is to throw away um, a, a, an incredible amount of, of wisdom that is built in by that is built into to our our constitutions, our statutes, and our common law. And you know, we <laughs> they said this in Jurassic Park, and I still think it's one of the great statements of all time. We stand on the shoulders of giants and know not whence where we come. Where <laughs> well, you know, the 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 value of standing on the law is that we get to stand on the shoulder of giants and know where we came from and know That's why important. we come there. That and, is so important. Um, and so, um, um, you know, <laughs> there's a, um, I've already had to say, I started January 1st, and I've already had to say in several of my cases across the board, criminal and, um, and civil, that, you know what, if it were me, I might decide differently. But the fact is the law dictates a particular outcome. And I committed to the citizens that I would follow the law and I will follow the law. And, um, um, and, and, and at the end of the day, people, again, may look at that and say, well, somehow that's unfair. That doesn't fit the circumstances. Well, that's where wisdom comes in. That's where discernment comes in. But the greater discernment, 
and and they and we know this as Christians. We know this is the greater discernment is to realize that God's law and the law baked into our system is the better law, is yes. the better choice, whether we think so or not, whether we like it or not, uh, whether we would want that necessarily applied to us or not. And of course, there's an element of grace that comes into this too, because uh, part of judgment, part of discernment is to realize that the law can be applied harshly or it can be applied in a way that um, builds up rather than tears down. And so that's where grace comes in. And yes, I do have an opportunity to exercise grace. It's not all about the law, but that should be the first place I look. And that's what a constitutional conservative is. They look to the law first. So if a law comes up from Austin and you're the... <laughs> it's being enforced and it comes yeah. before your case, your court and you necessarily do not personally agree with it. It's your responsibility as a judge to come down on the side of the law. That's what you're that, saying. It, it is what I'm saying. And, That's and, important and now, for everybody to understand. It's exactly what I'm saying. However, and I'm going to put a little comma here. Again, we have to remember that the higher law is the Constitution. Yes. And yes. as a result, can the legislature go off the rails? And this is where those, this is where the judiciary acts as shield, you know, is can the legislature go off the rails? And um, and 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 that's where the judge stands between the citizen and the government and says, no you shall not pass. Um, and, and, you know, if that is ever the case, it has not been yet in my court, if that is, is ever the case, um, all I can say is that that's part of my job too, is to try to discern um, um, sometimes which, sometimes when a higher law applies. But yes, exactly. yes. If the legislature passes something, I follow it. Yes. So your job is to um, defend the Constitution. <laughs> my, <laughs> my job ultimately is to defend society. And that, that is, that is uh, yes, we are, I, I, I consider the highest form of being an attorney and ultimately being a judge is to recognize that I am a guardian. Uh, I'm guardian of the law. I'm guardian of the people. I'm guardian of society. Um, and um, uh, it's a tremendous responsibility, but it, it's it's a tr also a tremendous. Um, um, it, it's a pleasure to serve. That's that's all I can say. It's just a pleasure to serve. Well, I've always been impressed with you, George, because you are so full of joy um, <laughs> and you're a man of faith. You go to Christ Church there in Plano and Anglican yes. Church, um, just full of God and full of the Bible. And I know you have a daily, uh, you know, rhythm of reading the Bible. I, I love for years you wrote devotionals on the Psalms and I'm, I'm doing that now. It's a, it's a really incredible yeah. habit that I've formed every week writing about the Psalms, but talk about how your life influences your work. So you're in the courtroom, you're a man of faith. What does that look like day to day? Well, um, it, it's actually simple uh, in, in one sense. Um, I know what my calendar is in advance. And I know the issues that are coming up because I read what I'm in preparation. Um, and so um, really my prayer every day. And um, um, now, now wisdom comes in part because when you read scripture, God brings that to mind that he wants you to have. But on a day, on, on, on really a, a more rigorous daily basis, it's a very simple prayer, but I just ask God for discernment you know, and, and to be able to hear 
the truth. And sometimes that's the truth that's not said, and sometimes it's the truth that is said, and sometimes um, it's, it's discerning right and wrong, it's discerning truth and not truth. Um, I just ask God for discernment, um, and, and sometimes on really difficult matters, an extra measure of the Holy Spirit that I might um, uh, that, that I might be like Solomon and be able, you know, to um, to discern a path that honors the law and yet brings grace to the situation. Um, and um, so that's it. I mean, it's just <laughs> simple. It's, it's it is simple. Simply it is simple. walking with God. Well, you know, um, I didn't know if you were going to ask me for my favorite Bible verse or not. And um, sure. so, so I reread it over and over again. I mean, it's the one I sort of wake up with. It's my mantra. And it's from 2 Timothy 1.7. Um, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity. And some, some translations are fear, but I prefer the word timidity. Uh, but of power and of love and of self-control. Um, and um, if ever I'm in a situation where I feel like I don't want to decide, I realize that that fear is not is Satan driven because it's not godly driven. God put me here to make decisions. And to, and to make wise decisions. And uh, to honor him, I need to adopt that spirit of power and of love and of self-control. Um, a spirit of timidity is not of God. It, it's, it's of Satan. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, Bunny, I realize this isn't in your questions, but I realize this goes out to a wider audience. Um, the reason I support, and I do support, and you know I'm a monthly supporter, um, you know, for, for your organization. The reason I support Christians Engaged is that when we are not engaged, what are what spirit are we exercising? It's mm. a spirit of timidity, and that comes from Satan. When we're not engaged in in our neighbors, when we're not engaged in our home, when not we're not engaged in society, when we're not engaged in the political process, we're not engaged with our with our representatives, when we're not engaged with our God. Why not? And, and it's because we've adopted a spirit of timidity as opposed to a spirit of power and of love and of self-control. And when you have that spirit, you can't help but be engaged uh, across the board. So good, Judge. We will take your endorsement to the bank. Thank you. <laughs> but no, really, we talk about this in our on-ramp to civic engagement class that we're doing around different cities. And we talk about in the last session how to operate as a Christian with integrity in the political movements. And we have this discussion that courage and boldness can coincide with operating in the spirit of the Beatitudes and Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Now, that doesn't sound like it goes together, right? Being peacemakers, being hungering and thirsty after righteousness, being meek um, and gentle. But those two things can coincide. How do you how do you balance that in a very partisan world as a <laughs> Christ follower in having to run again on a political party? Again, you're a judge, but that's difficult. Talk to us how you engage in that. Well, um, first of all, as you know, as a judge, I'm, I'm essentially prohibited from commenting on political matters. And, yes. um, and, and which is somewhat difficult because there's many things that have gone on that I would have loved to have written a Facebook post or, uh, or an article in the newspaper um, that I have to bite my tongue. But um um, yeah. 
how do you watch your heart is the question, I guess. Yeah. Um, I have to ask myself the question, if I'm angry, why? Why am I angry? Is it because I'm being picked on? Because somebody doesn't agree with me? Well, you know what? Jesus said that was going to happen. So why am I angry? Why oh, wow, am I responding good. out of anger? Um, and so, you know, when if people call me a name, um, so what? And, and, you know, one of the great, and I am speaking very now as a Christian, one of the great benefits, in fact, it is probably the benefit in my mind, a belief in Christ is that you are in fact free, you know, and by being free, what harm can come to you? What harm can come to me? My reputation, irrelevant. My, um, um, anybody agreeing with me, irrelevant. And you know what? When you realize that, when you realize that the outcome is God's outcome and not your outcome, then you can be excellent. You can you can talk to people in a way that's encouraging and that is loving and even accepting. You know, somebody may disagree with me, and they many times do in a way that is um, hostile and in a way that is um, represents a viewpoint that I consider dangerous, absolutely dangerous. But does that mean I have to be hostile to them? Does that mean that I have to um, uh, try to beat them into the ground? No, no. And you know what? When they don't have the power over you to cause you to have that kind of reaction, Guess who has the power in that situation? It's me. You do. I yes. do. Because I can speak truth and I can speak love and I can do all that in power, knowing full well that the outcome is in Jesus's God's hands, not mine, not mine. And at the end of the day, it will be his will that is accomplished. Uh, whether I'm on first or second or third or not even on the ball field, it's his will that's accomplished. And what that means is that I can act freely and openly and lovingly. And so I ask myself this question when I'm angry and I get angry like everybody else. Why? Why am I angry? Is it because I'm being attacked? So what? Is it because my views are being attacked? So what? Because the truth will prevail. God's will so many, will prevail. Yes. So many people need to hear that right now. I can tell you uh, the last month has been very difficult for myself personally. And I, I'm sure a lot of people that are listening oh. to us right now just suffering. Oh, like with I anger. said, I wish I'd had. <laughs> <laughs> I'd been able to write my acerbic piece about. <laughs> yes, yes, but that is such a great perspective. You know, at the end of the day, we're we have to just lean back into God and trust trust what's happening trust that he's got us and and remember that jesus said that we would go through trouble i know no one wants to hear that but he said we would go through trouble guys so be of good cheer he has overcome the world right. so that's a really great perspective judge thank you so much for your time today and i know this has been very educational for folks well, guys we've got to get people politically educated so one last question on that. Why should people get politically educated, Judge? Why should well, they learn these simple things like about courts? <laughs> well, at the end of the day, how do you how do you vote for somebody who has a particular position without knowing what that person is supposed to do and without knowing what character what is required to do the job? And then knowing that person well enough, and you've got to know that person, you've got to be engaged with them. You can't go with sound bites. I, yes. I'm sorry. Anybody can put on a mask and make a sound bite. Um, 
you've got to know the character of that person. Because at the end of the day, we behave in accordance with our character and our fundamental beliefs. And, and so you know, we want people of good character in office. We want people of understanding in office. And how do we elect those people? It's the nature of a free society that the citizens have to almost know as much about what's going on as the people that are representing them do. Why? Because they've got to select the folks that will go and represent them. And how do you know that without knowing the job, knowing the, what the duties are for that job, knowing the character that's required for that job, and knowing the character of the people you're electing to that job so that all that matches, all that matches. Um, so good. Uh, it's, it's critical. It's absolutely critical uh, that we are knowledgeable about why things and why things work the way they do. So that, quite frankly, when we're in position to vote or we're in position to act or to or to recommend, we know the lever to pull. You know, we know the deflection point. I like to call it, uh, I always have this idea of a defender. And if you're going to be a single defender against a horde, a, against an army, how do you do that? Well, you pick what I call the narrow pass. You pick the place that's most easily defended. How do you know that? Unless you're engaged and you've studied and you, you understand how things work. Um, so Good. that's it. That's a, that's a perfect way to end. Everybody get politically engaged, help your neighbors and your Sunday school members get politically engaged and, you know, not only get engaged, but just get educated. And that's part of what this conversations with Christians engaged podcast is about why we have over 140 articles on our website guys for you to get involved and why we created our pledge for you to pray vote and engage we want to remind you every time there's an election and we want to give you basic tools again not endorsing political parties or candidates but give you basic tools to know how to research your ballot to discover the information that you need to make a critical decision like are you going to you know vote for George in Collin County. That's the question. So you need to know that and you need to be educated on how to do that. So that's why we're here at Christians Engage. Take our pledge to pray, vote, and engage on our website at christiansengage.org and join the thousands of people around Texas that have done that and are taking that pledge seriously. Now, my final announcement before I let George go, and I do have a, a, another question for him before we leave, is our conference is coming up November 5th and 6th. You do not want to miss it. If you've gone to our social media feeds, all I'm doing is talking about our conference. Ali Best Stuckey, James Robinson, Rick Perry, Congressman Michael Cloud, Matt Schaefer, Matt Krause from the State House. Um, let me go on. Corey Russell from the Upper Room on Prayer, June Hunt on the Power of the Bible, Kyle Martin on the Power of the Gospel. I mean, this is going to look like some crazy conference that you guys have never seen. When have we ever seen ministry leaders and political leaders? all Christ followers across denominational lines coming together in one place to do one thing, which is to speak to the church, an important message of this hour, it's time to wake up. That's what this is about. And this is an empowering weekend for you. You do not want to miss it. So grab your tickets. We only have 700 seats. We will sell out before this event happens. So don't wait to get your tickets. Okay, with that, one last question, George. Yes. So you're doing these hard cases, like all these cases every day. What do you do when you get home to relax other than read your Bible? What's another <laughs> thing that you do? Well, I play with my dog. Uh, I talk to my wife. Uh, I help cook dinner. <laughs> and, so you're a um, real person? Like you cook I, I'm dinner. I'm a real person. And um, <laughs> I probably do binge watch some television that I shouldn't. Uh, uh, but it, it can be mind dulling and I read spy novels. So spy novels. Okay. Spy I didn't novels. know that about you. And I didn't know the cooking part either. I can see you. Well, cooking. I'm not a very good cook. I said, help. It's my okay, wife. Help, cooking. <laughs> I said, help. 
Got it. Got it. Well, thank you so much again, guys. You're pray welcome. for your elected officials and please let's pray for our judges. Pull up their names on your county websites. Look at your county government and pray over your district judges and your judges all around your county. OK, thank you so much for joining thank us. You. And we will see you next time on Conversations with Christians Engaged. Thank you so much. Bonnie.